Thank you so much for joining us. Well, th thank you for having me. You've just been an incredible host, my friend. And uh, it's been really incredible to see your country. You gave me the most incredible tour of the high-tech sector of Saudi Arabia yesterday. And it's truly impressive what, what your country is doing to create opportunities for entrepreneurs. Uh, I'd say including and especially women. I was very impressed to meet a number of uh, female entrepreneurs yesterday at the garage. Uh, at your uh, startup incubator, so it's just been it's been very impressive to see. You're too kind. What a, what a what a wonderful introduction. So David, yesterday, Your Excellency, we had the absolute wonderful opportunity to cement the partnership, more than 90 years of a relationship, a strategic alliance between the U.S. and Saudi Arabia, Saudi Arabia and the U.S. to move and foster from an energy-based economy. Today, we fuel roughly 20% of the global mix. Mm -hmm. Moving to the digital economy, and you just have rec recognized our women empowerment in tech, 36%. Can we get a big round of applause for all the amazing women fueling our digital economy and being named number one, number two consecutively by ITU, the World Bank, the World Economic Forum? Fast forward to the intelligent age. The intelligent age yesterday we showed you how we're leveraging our energy, our capital, our land, captive market to push activation, acceleration, and adoption. The lowest price point for training, inference, and some of the world leading examples in generative AI, in, in healthcare, sickle cell disease, agentic AI, transforming both the wonderful PIF portfolio and our government efficiency and adoption in, led by Aramco with their meta brain, the corrosion. Tell me about your reflections. Well, w when we were uh, doing the tour yesterday of the, uh, of the startup garage, uh, one of the, the things that we saw, which wasn't, I think, planned or on the tour, is we saw a it whiteboard wasn't. that someone had drawn uh, a, a diagram for model context protocol, or MCP. I don't know if people here know what MCP is, but it's really, it's catching fire in the world of AI. And it showed that your, your founders and entrepreneurs are really on the cutting edge of what's happening with, with AI. Uh, MCP is a, is a new, um, it's a new standard that allows uh, agents to talk to existing SaaS applications or any kind of application. And it's really going to enable this agentic future that I think is the next big wave in, in AI. So the fact that someone had just was, was scribbling that on a whiteboard showed me and, that. And trust me, that, that wasn't that was was planted there no, or orchestrated. I could that tell, was organic. It I could shows tell, you the depth and the breadth of the technical capacity that we have, led by our youth and women. Yes, and I, I could tell that, that there, there's a founder who, who is building an, uh, an AI agent there who's really on the cutting edge. And I think this is the kind of thing we need to, uh, to enable and to want to support. The thing that, that I, I've learned in Silicon Valley over the past 25 years is that every successful company in Silicon Valley gets to be that way by creating an ecosystem. And the biggest the most powerful companies in tech are the ones that create the biggest ecosystem. In fact, they do that by creating a standard. They want everyone to build on top of them. They create app stores, things like that. In fact, they're able to build these ecosystems without even having any lawyers involved. There's no need for a contract. You just publish an API and people will build. And I think in a similar way, the United States needs to encourage the world to build on our tech stack. You know, the first week that I became uh, AI czar for, for President I Trump. I love that, AI yeah, czar. It's a, it's a big title to live up to sometimes. But, uh, but the president challenged us and he tasked us. He said, we have to win the AI race. The United States has to win the AI race. And every day I think about. Win with the kingdom. Well, I'm about to get there. And, and I, I think about how is it that we do that? How do we win the AI race? And the answer is that we have to build the biggest partner ecosystem. We need our friends like the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and other strategic partners and allies to want to build on our tech. And yet, over the past few years, that's been the opposite of the approach in Washington. The Trump administration just announced that we'd be rescinding what's known as the Biden diffusion rule, which was a rule that came out in January. Can we get a thank you? Because it's about diffusion, the, the, adoption. The, yes, the, the Biden diffusion rule came out in, in January, and it literally restricted the, the diffusion which, or proliferation of American technology all over the world. 
Now, the original reason for this diffusion rule is that we have a policy of not wanting our advanced semiconductors to go to what are known as countries of concern. Mm -hmm. But there's only a very, very small number of those countries. And really, we're talking about you know, America's uh, uh, central competitors in, in the world. It was never intended to capture friends, allies, strategic partners. And yet, out of this, I think, desire to try and prevent diffusion, uh, what Washington sought to do was create a uh, regime restricting the, uh, the transfer of basically of data centers, of data center technology. Now imagine if, you know, let's take, let's take this. Imagine if Washington had created a diffusion rule for the iPhone because it was worried about bad guys somehow getting a hold of iPhones and every iPhone transaction had to be licensed in Washington. This technology would not have spread all over the world. And the diffusion of iPhones is a very good thing for the United States of America. I think in a similar way, we want our technology to diffuse or to spread. We want people to use it. We want to become the standard. And I think that in Washington, that mentality has, I think, been sorely lacking over the past few years. But we're, we're going to bring it back. Well, this is a general purpose technology. And, and you can't leave pe people behind. Yes. Folks were going to get these chips a way or another. But you need to make sure that there are safeguards and guardrails to make sure that there is no technological diversion. And if I take the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, we've had your mainframe, for example, back then. It used to be called the supercomputer since 1947 in Aramco. And they had protocols on how to protect it, diversion to any specific nation. And, and I couldn't agree with you more, my dear friend. It's all about the diffusion. This is how you create stickiness with your clients, with your partners, how you can create success, and how could you scale up this, this trillion dollar business soon to be multiple of trillion dollars. Right. Let me speak to that, that uh, risk of, of diversion for a second. So you're absolutely right. It's not an issue with a, a friend like Saudi Arabia at all. Thank you. But I think that in general, I think that there's a, a great deal of misunderstanding about the defer, uh, diversion of GPUs. Uh, people tend to think that these things uh, are like diamonds that can fit in a briefcase or something like that. That's an antiquated understanding now of the type of technology we're talking about. What we're really talking about here are servers that incorporate uh, GPUs. And in fact, we're talking about server racks. The latest NVIDIA product called NVL72 is a server uh, cabinet that contains 72 super chips. It's stacked eight feet high and weighs 3,600 pounds, okay? This is not something that can be smuggled in a briefcase. And the <laughs> truth is that you need thousands of these things Indeed. to create a supercluster that could be a national security threat to the United States. So the, 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 um, the, the, the policy objective of preventing diversion to countries of concerns is an absolutely uh, important objective of the United States, but it is not a difficult one to achieve. The truth of the matter is that all one would have to do is send someone to a data center and count the server racks to make sure that the chips are still there. And so we act like this is something where we need to shut down uh, every data center in the world unless it specifically goes through Washington. This is not the case. We can manage this problem of diversion without stopping the diffusion of American technology. Well, David, you've seen it yesterday, how U.S. technologies have helped us deliver a passport within five minutes. You said to me, we're going to see, soon yes. see that in other economies as well. How you could renew your license, how you could do all of your different digital services in a cashless society as well, from the digital age and in the intelligent age. We've showed you firsthand how we're creating nanorobots with CRISPR technology, leveraging generative AI to tackle sickle cell disease, bad cholesterol, have targeted gene therapy, which is remarkable, reducing the cost to treat a patient from 2.2 million to just a sub $100,000. Think about the remarkable work that we're doing in agentic AI, helping Aramco energize the world, which we need to fuel the US ambition and Saudi's ambition in AI training and inference because we're gonna converge not only to the price point of electronics, but it's really the price points of electrons. In the kingdom today, in renewable, in the last bit, we had a, a single cents per kilowatt hour at generation. We continue to push the needle on the lowest price point 
per million token input and output. We've just released it in Damam, which is quite remarkable. And we're pushing also on physical AI with the first fully robotics heart transplant. So you're seeing it in essence that you're joining hands with a reliable partner that is all about the great good of diffusion and adoption of these technologies for the greater good of the people, planet, and prosperity. My good Thank friend, you. we could not be more proud of our partnership. And as we say in Saudi, once we partner, we partner for a lifetime. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Give it to David Sachs, please. Thank you. Thank you.